Hello folks, it's Scott with Dallas Paint Correction and Auto Detailing all over again. You getting sick of me? Probably. Don't blame you. Listen, I want to talk about something that is a B, and I'm not saying a bad word. It is a bear to clean. It's seat belts. This stuff is unbelievably difficult to remove stains from. I don't know why whatever material, space age material they're using to keep us safe when we're driving in the car, we gotta use the seatbelt. When stains get on this stuff, they are so darn difficult to get off. Trust me, I don't know if you've ever tried it, but as a professional detailer, this is an area of the car I wanna hone in on. I can't tell you how many times I've come to my customer's vehicles and they had some professional service clean their car and I'll grip, one of the first things I'll do is I'll grab the seat belt and I'll pull it out. I find stains all over this stuff. Again, I know it's difficult to remove. I'm not blaming anybody, but I got a couple of tricks, a couple of secrets that might be helpful for you guys cleaning seat belts. The very first trick, the most expensive part of this deal is this little clip in my hand. Am I in the camera? There it is. This thing, I don't know if you can buy it. I paid about $300, $400 for this fancy little clip. That's a joke. This thing cost me, I don't know, a dollar at the dollar store. It's like a big clothespin hanger type of thing. But it's great when it comes to cleaning the seatbelt, and I'll tell you why. When we pull the seatbelt out to clean it, what does this thing want to do? It keeps wanting to go back into the B-pillar. It's a pain in the butt. So I pull the seatbelt all the way out. I want access to every bit of this seatbelt and I take this fancy little clip and I put it up here on top of the seatbelt pull-in mechanism, whatever it's called, inside the B-pillar. And now I can hold this without fighting it. This thing wants to keep going back into the B-pillar. Now I've got it out and I can fully access every bit of this seatbelt. Now seatbelts get dirty for an obvious reason our floors get dirty, the carpets get dirty, we're touching the steering wheel with our greasy, slimy hands, those areas get dirty. So does the seatbelt. We're grabbing this thing and fastening our precious little bodies in this car. All of you are precious. Make sure you're wearing these seatbelts. We want you safe. But I want to clean this thing. And like I said, it is difficult to remove stains from seatbelts for whatever reason. It's the material. Maybe when grease and grime gets in here, it just doesn't want to release from this seatbelt. It's a pain in the butt. So what I'm gonna do is typically, I want to look in the area that most people are touching. I kind of evaluate my customer. I get an idea of how they're using their seatbelt, where they're touching it most, and I want to hone in those areas first. Now there's a couple of ways I can clean the seatbelt. I can take my super degreaser, Simply spray the seatbelt. Come on, spray the seatbelt. Let me do, spray the seatbelt like this, right? Get it a little bit wet with the super degreaser. I can take a magic eraser and simply go over the seatbelt, all over the seatbelt, go inch by inch up and down the seatbelt and remove some of the stains off the seatbelt. This works pretty good. It's not the best method for me. Sometimes I got to get a little bit more aggressive. I might even have to grab a toothbrush, our handy little toothbrush that keeps us uh, all, all orally happy. And I'll take that toothbrush and I'll come in and hit some of the bad stains, the tougher stains, and kind of agitate my super degreaser that's laying on the seatbelt and scrub it in. If that doesn't work, and trust me, sometimes it doesn't, the stains on this stuff can be a bear. I'll go my next step. I might grab a little bit of a tougher brush. This, may, this brush here is made by OXO or OXO. I bought it at Target. The bristles are a little bit more aggressive than a toothbrush. This can help me sometimes when the, the soils on the seatbelt can be a little tough. I can get in there and agitate a little bit more. Or if that doesn't work and I've got to up my game, I always have my steamer with me. I'll spray the seatbelt with some super degreaser over the stains. I'll take my steamer and I'll simply steam over this seatbelt and I'll do it all the way down to the bottom of the seatbelt, all the way to the top, take my clip off and let it retract back into the B-pillar. But this works the best for me to be able to remove those stains without having to sit here and agitate every inch of the seatbelt. It's a lot of elbow grease so I want to make my life easier. This seems to help me quite a bit. Now. These seatbelts, depending on how old the vehicle is, 
they'll start to get frayed on the edges. As a detailer, this might not be a step for you. You have to decide if this makes sense in your world, but I want my customers happy. I want them to know I am detail oriented. If you watch my floor mat video, I take a pair of scissors and I clip around the floor mat to take away those frayed areas of the, of the floor mat. I'll do the same with the seatbelt. This seatbelt doesn't require it. It's in good shape. Heck, hardly nobody sits in the dry, on the passenger side anyway in this car. But if it's frayed along the edges, again, I'm not cutting the seatbelt. There's liability to that. You don't want to damage the seatbelt. But sometimes if there's just frayed areas, I'll just straighten it up a little bit along the edges. I want it to look, I want it to look special. I want it to look detailed. I want it to, I want to dial it in. My customers seem to like that. Again, be careful. There's liability here. Don't take a pair of scissors and actually ruin the seatbelt because then your fanny is on the line for liability if somebody gets in an accident. So this is probably a technique left to those who are okay with that type of liability. Again, I'm not an idiot, and I'm assuming you're not either. You're not either. Just clip off the phrase along the edges, that's fine. You're just taking off that little pieces of chunks, a little phrase, you're not actually cutting the deal. Now, when I've got this all clean, and I want to stop stains from getting on it in the future. I don't know. My customer may use this for work. Maybe he or she is in the construction business. Their hands are dirty. They're constantly grabbing their seatbelt. I know they're going to get some more stains on this. I'm going to take Scotch Guard, Fabric Guard, whatever you want to call it, Fabric Protector, and I'm going to spray this seatbelt down. This stuff works wonders. It's cheap as can be. I paid five bucks, I think, for a can of this stuff. And that's really, to be honest with you, it's one of the reasons why I don't upcharge for putting fabric guard on people's cloth seats, the carpets, or the seat belts. But this stuff will lay kind of a sacrificial layer on the seat belt. So any future stains that might get on this seat belt are easier for me to remove if the customer wants me to come back and detail their car or if they want to clean it. To be honest with you, I don't see a lot of people cleaning this seatbelt all that much. But if I come back and I clean that car, I want to be able to remove some of those stains that might have gotten on there again and I want them to come off easier. This stuff will make your this this stuff just makes your life easier. It's cheap. It's five dollars a can. You can just about get all these areas, the carpet, the floor mats, the cloth seats, this has leather, it's not an issue, and the seat belts with a can, maybe even less. It's up to you how much you want to put on there. But that's kind of my tips and tricks, and I love this little tool. Again, it's my $300 clip or clamp to stop that seat belt from retracting back into the B-pillar. This is a great way to do it, just this fancy little dollar clip to stop that seatbelt from moving on you so you can get in there and clean it, not fighting it every time it wants to go back in on you. Cool little trick. I hope this helps you out. I know this is a boring topic, but when it comes to seatbelts, man, for me as a detailer, I'm always looking at areas of the car that when my customer says they had a professional detailer take care of their car for them in the past and they called me, that typically tells me they're probably not happy with their last detailer and they want to try my services out. I start looking at these areas like the seat belt, the nooks and crannies around the shift lever, the door jams. These are some of the areas that will drive customers nuts and they feel like they've been short handed or whatever when it comes to detailing their cars. And I'm not the cheapest guy on the planet. In Dallas, there's a lot of competition for me. It's important. What separates a good detailer from an excellent detailer is all about the details. How detailed do you want to be? Maybe this doesn't make sense to you to clean the seatbelt the way I do. It makes sense in my world because my customers appreciate it. Let me get into the view here. And to me, that's important. That's what separates a good detailer from a, an excellent detailer. I used to be a good detailer and I had to make that jump. That jump going from good to excellent always meant that I became more aware. I was more aware of my own physical body within the car. I spotted things inside the car. I had to provide myself discipline, get in there, chase down those nooks and crannies, go to the places other people would fail to look. That takes time. That takes diligence. And something like a seatbelt is an area that seems to get neglected quite a bit. 
that to me is an opportunity for me to rise above my competition. Again, there's plenty of work for everybody. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I want everybody to have the work that they want, and there's plenty of it. But for me, my services, sometimes a customer will ask me, why are you more expensive than some of the other detailers in Dallas? This is how I answer the question. I tell them there's certain parts of the car, it doesn't matter. My, my package may be three or $400 to detail a car, but there's no time restraint for me. It could take me five hours to do it. If that's what it takes to dial that car in and get that customer to be with me for the rest of the time they own that car, that is a beautiful experience to have. I'm in the business of re building relationships. It's not so much about detailing cars. It's my passion, it's my love, my money, my security comes from building relationships. And as silly as it sounds, folks, little stuff like this, cleaning the seatbelt thoroughly, making sure you're getting it done right, taking a silly pair of scissors like this and cutting around the floor mats to kind of dial that floor mat in, it's little things like that. You will be shocked if you're a professional detailer. Your customers will notice it. If they don't, I bring it up, I make sure that I kind of tell them without being obnoxious or rude, I want them to know I care. So if you're a professional detailer and watching this video, I love you, I want you to get more money, I want you to get more business, I want you to rise above the competition. The quickest way to do it is just become more aware. Start looking at areas in the car, be self-disciplined, be honest with yourself and say, did I really go as far as I could go? Did I go deep down that rabbit hole? Now again, in business, it's about being profitable too. I get it. I understand it. But you got to ask yourself, what does it mean to be a professional? I see a lot of videos, and I'm going on a rant here, but just stay with me. I see a lot of videos about professional detailers always talking about how do I get from point A to point B as quick as I can because I want my money. Well, folks, that to me is a slippery slope. There's nothing wrong with getting the job done in a quicker period of time as long as you're not skimping on quality and throwing your customer under the, under the bus along the way because in my opinion, this car, the money that I'm being paid for it is not mine until I'm done with this car and my money, I want my money to go much further than this one particular detail with this customer. I want that customer to call me again. I want them to trust me. I want them to respect me. I want them to know I've raised my level of awareness. I'm always providing self-discipline for myself. And here's another point. Every time I detail a car, I never take it for granted that I've done this kind of car a thousand times. This is a walk in the park. It's no big deal. I know all the nooks and crannies. Here's a beautiful thing if you're willing to do it. Again, I'm ranting, but I'm trying to help some of you pro detailers if you're out there. It helps me too to kind of remind me and say this out loud. But if I take for granted because I've cleaned this Lincoln Navigator a hundred times and I just go in there and do my process, which is fine, but if I'm honest with myself and I'm more aware of what I'm doing, I will start to realize there might be some areas that I've missed in the past and that's a great experience for me. I'm learning, I'm growing, I'm honing my skills, I'm rising above the competition. That's incredibly important for me, not only as an individual, as a professional detailer, but for my customers as well. Just a little rant there for you professional detailers. I want all of you, you know, this idea of what is a professional? Well, some people tell me a professional is, is just because you got paid for the job, you're a professional now. In my opinion, that's not true, and I'll tell you why. You ever gone to the doctor? I'm going on a rant, I'll shut up in a minute. You ever go to a doctor, and that doctor says to you, you got a virus, or not a virus, you got an infection, you need antibiotics. Some doctors will actually give a crap and ask you, hey, have you ever tried this antibiotic before? Did you have any side effects with it? Did it bother you? Maybe you tell them, hey, listen, I got problems with certain types of drugs. They upset my stomach. I sit on the toilet for 10 days straight when I'm on it. Some doctors don't, no pun intended, give a crap. They're just writing a prescription. They know they're going to heal you. They know they're going to fix you, and that's fine. And out the door you go. Then there are doctors who care. There are doctors who are more aware of their relationship with their patient and will ask the right questions. As a professional de detailer, I want to ask those questions of my customers. What's important to them? I'm not only going to dial this car in to the best of my ability, but I want to know from my customers what's important to you. And I get so many different answers. So to me, being a professional 
in the car detailing business isn't always trying to get from point A to point B as quick as I can. I want to build a long-term relationship with my customer. I also want to provide self-discipline for myself, more awareness of what I'm doing. You have to decide what's important to you as a detailer. Do you want to rise above the competition? Do you want to take your business to the next level? These are the things you're going to have to do, especially if you're a sole proprietor and you're working alone. It's up to you, and you can do it. You can absolutely do it. You've got the ability to rise above the competition, not to hurt anybody, but because you demand more of yourself. And I promise you, your customers are going to notice it. They may not notice it right away. You stay in that game. You stay in that mindset, and you keep pushing forward. This is what I want for myself. This is what I want for my business, and this is what I want for my customers. Your customers will notice it. They'll start saying to other friends, you got to talk to this guy. you got to deal with this guy. He's unbelievable. Hey, tomorrow's my birthday. I went on a rant. I wanted to feel good about myself. I want you guys to feel good about yourself, especially if you're a professional detailer. A little simple trick of cleaning seat belts. My little clip, steam, agitating it with a brush. These things are tough. My God, I, you know, you want to hang yourself with these things. But dialing these in is tough. But if you're a professional detailer, you're doing it right, I promise you someone's going to notice. I will.